Time for my panel now and we'll lighten it up in a little bit, but let's start with generous flexibility clauses, including working from home rights are set to apply to 85,000 government employees. Lucky them. Joining me to discuss is ex-commando Wes Hennessy and News Corp columnist Angela Mollard. So great to see you both. Aaron. Hi, Aaron. And what are your thoughts? Oh, look, I think everyone should have some right to work from home, but I'm concerned about the public service. Look, one, one good thing about it is that they might attract, with these um, working from home provisions, some good talent from the private sector, because, of <laughs> course, you, you know, we're always losing good people out of the public sector to the private sector. I'm also a little bit concerned, you know, you were just talking about the new Navy fleet. How are we going to staff these submarines well, we can't. and these we can't hunter staff the current we can't crop. Staff the, I know, but what if they're all then working from home? Um, my daughter's in defence and she's just started one day Autonomous. a week working from home. <laughs> exactly. Look, lots of issues with this that, that mm. aren't great. And I had people that, uh, friends that were starting new jobs, they started them in COVID, they didn't have any work um, um, colleagues, they didn't get to know the team. It, was an, it wasn't a great situation for anybody. Also, how can you really see if somebody's reaching their KPIs if you're not in front of them sometimes? So I don't think that it's great for the worker. I don't think it's necessarily great great yeah. for the employer um, and, but I think maybe one or two days from home but really yeah. the, the bulk of the work should be face to face. I, I think to drive in here tonight. No I know <laughs> it's a punish it's a punish I get it I get it and I think Wes that when you look at you know someone who's working for themselves or working as part of something they believe in is likely to work hard they're self-motivated if you're working for the government and you've got great yeah, conditions you're getting a, a paycheck of, you know, one how are you doesn't... motivated? Yeah I think it's a case of one shoe you know doesn't fit all um, so to me, it's very dependent on what the specific job role function is, uh, who they're working for, uh, what credibility has been established in regards to their productivity and, as Ange mentioned, meeting those KPIs. Um, so I think there's a lot there. Um, I think we should uh, always offer um, the ability for people to work at home with uh, compassion or extenuating circumstances. Mm. They may have um, sick children uh, or a sick partner. Um, they may have to travel. They may have an ailment themselves. So as long as their productivity is there, the guidelines are clear, but I just don't think it should be a single rule yeah. uh, for everyone. I think it should be case-by-case case scenario. And that's on both sides of the fence. So if employees want them to come in, then they should have to come in. If a person wants to stay at home, then they need to justify it. In a controversial move, lawmakers in Florida have passed legislation to ban kids under 16 from social media. Now, this is... Fascinating, and I'm kind of a little bit in the middle here. Where's the legislation seeks to protect the mental health of our kids? What are your thoughts? Well, if anybody has tracked um, the Senate hearings uh, where Meta has been absolutely, you know, dragged over the coals for, um, I think it was a few weeks ago, for a few weeks, and some of the things that come out of that, which I won't repeat on air. Um, were, were quite frankly uh, very, very alarming. So what that demonstrated was the catch nets that we, the safety catch nets for our children that we thought were uh, within the apps clearly are not. Mm. And the persons then working for Meta to provide further, like a physical catch net, safety catch nets for children, um, obviously weren't working uh, as well as they thought and in some cases not working at all. What has also been demonstrated, I believe, you know, as generations change is um, sadly and respectively, and it's not the case certainly for all parents, but parenting isn't parenting anymore. So we can't rely on parents. Um, they either may be too busy or they're not parenting, um, you know, the kids with enough supervision. And we certainly can't rely on Meta um, yeah. to provide the safety catch net appropriate for to protect our children. So I think, um, you know, laws like this will start seeing come into place more and more. Yeah. And then when you look at the mental health aspect, well, there's been a thousand studies that have proven that the mental health uh, of the youth has gone down when they become excessive um, yeah. on these apps. No, no, you're right. And look, I know this space very well. I, I was a big part of pushing for the laws that we've got in this country, but it's an ever evolving space. And the only concern I have is when I traveled the country and met with so many kids who were struggling immensely, so much of the upside of social media is what helped them survive really tough times. They found communities online that were incredibly mm -hmm. supportive. So I kind of argue, why are we just going to ban them? Ban the yeah. companies and force the companies to do the right thing and then let them use the good side of it.
I, I absolutely agree. And, and the, those meta hearings, as you say, there needs to be greater el uh, accountability. And the, the fact is that these companies can have the most finessed algorithms for pulling you in, mm -hmm. but they don't have those finessed algorithms for protecting you. Look, I'm not really a fan of, of you know, blanket bans at 16. I feel that education is key here. And I think that the liaison between schools and parents and the gathering together, the old parental tribe, you know, when you're Mm. Your, your your friend's um, mm. mum would ring and check if you had got home on time. <laughs> I think that tribe, that alignment between parents that basically says, look, you know, we were too slow with seatbelts. We've been too slow with vaping. We are not taking care of our kids' mental health and, and we really, you know, need to examine them more. So if my kid's going to put their phone away at 7 o'clock at night and have a couple of hours of quiet time with family or, or chatting mm. or playing games or reading... Can we try to talk about that as a group of parents, as a tribe, that our, all mm. our kids do that together and so you're not feeling like one kid is, yeah, is missing out? But it's got to be a, a parent-driven. Parent it's yeah. it's got to come from parents and educators. No, you both make really good points. Now, finally, I'm desperate to get this one in. A man demands his <laughs> ex-wife gives back the kidney he gave her or $2.3 million. <laughs> Look, I suspect... He'd prefer the cash. <laughs> but, look, Angie, you've been through a separation, so have I. I mean, it kind of, you know, it gets messy, doesn't it? <laughs> It can get messy. Mine was um, fortunately reasonably amicable, which I'm, I'm, you know, one of the great joys of my life. But man, this guy, I mean, sorry, you've given her that. Presumably she may have raised his children. So, you know, had she not been there, how much money would he have lost by not having, let's just say she died because of lack of the kidney. He'd have had a lot more responsibilities, right? I mean, honestly, if you're going to go around with that level of bitterness, you're not going to have a very happy life. Whereas he's actually a doctor and I heard an interview where he said, Said something to the effect of, I only gave her my kidney because I thought it would improve our marriage and it didn't work, so I want I it back. This, yeah, this, one, this, one's, this one's easy, uh, Aaron. Uh, a man who gives his wife uh, a kidney out of uh, love and obviously she, I don't know the full details, but the dire circumstances she would have been in for that to then ask for it back, uh, that's quite easy. This guy is morally uh, bankrupt um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> As I think Anne said, um, karma, I believe, will come around and uh, pay me a visit. I do also want to acknowledge some of the men watching who are nodding, going, this bloke has the right idea. <laughs> we all come from different places. Our legends, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thanks.